Access to internet is not ubiquitous. 40% of the world doesn't have access to the internet. Places like Middle East, Africa and Asia are lagging behind. Laying long cables to connect to remote areas is expensive, especially for areas that have low sparsity. While 96% of urban areas in the US have access to broadband connections, only 60% of the rural areas do. So there is a big opportunity for a satellite internet space to take over these underserved communities. That's where Starlink will shine. Starlink is a service launched by SpaceX. Until recently, most of the internet satellite services had low bandwidth and high latency. This is due to the fact that they use satellites that are geostationary. That means they are very far away from the Earth. They were around 22,000 miles. With that distance, there is a lot of latency that the signal from Earth takes to get to the satellites. So internet satellite services using geostationary satellites would take at least 120 milliseconds to go from the user terminal to the satellite and 120 milliseconds to come back. So at least 240 milliseconds of latency. The current services Viasat and HughesNet offer internet services for around $30 to $150 for latencies of actually around 400 milliseconds. And they offer speeds only between 12 to 100 megabits per second. Viasat, for example, has around 216 gigabits per second of total bandwidth that it had to share among all its users. A lot of places here in the US and Canada have access to terrible internet. And these are the customers that Starlink is going after. So what is different between Starlink and all these other services? First of all, Starlink is creating a low Earth orbit constellation of satellites at around one third to one hundredth of the distance of the geostationary satellites. That makes the latency between the user terminal and the satellites much lower. And the total latency for the radio signals to go from user terminal to the satellite and back is around 25 to 35 milliseconds, much lower than its competitors. Add that to the fact that light travels much faster between satellites in space at around 40% faster than glass, and that's fiber optic. Not only that, Starlink designed each satellite to handle a lot of bandwidth. Each satellite can handle 1 terabit per second. That's roughly 40,000 people streaming 4K video all at once. It is also deploying thousands of satellites in space. With all its satellites, it might be able to handle hundreds of millions of people. But Starlink will only focus on low sparsity areas as stated by Elon Musk in this video. The, the challenge for anything that is uh, space-based is that the, the size of the cell is gigantic. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it's, like I said, it's great for, for uh, very low to maybe, maybe medium s uh, sort of sparsity situations, but it's not, uh, it's not good for high-density situations. So we'll, we'll have some small number of customers in LA, but we, we can't do a lot of customers in LA because the bandwidth per cell is, is simply not uh, high enough. It will deploy its satellites in three phases. The first phase will deploy around 4,400 satellites. In the second phase, will deploy around 7,500 more and already ask permission for the government to deploy 30,000 more satellites. It will deploy them in three different regions at 210 miles, 340 miles and 690 miles. Make no mistake, this business is really hard to launch. All other companies except SpaceX that tried to deploy low Earth orbit satellites went bankrupt, as stated by Elon Musk. I mean, it's real important to just set the stage here for LEO communications constellations. Guess how many uh, LEO constellations uh, didn't go bankrupt? Mm -hmm. Zero. Right. Zero. 
Um, yeah, Iridium is doing OK now, but the Iridium 1 went bankrupt. Orbcom went bankrupt. Um, Global Star bankrupt. Teledesic bankrupt. Am I leaving anyone out? There's a bunch of others that didn't get very far that also went bankrupt. Anyway, they all went bankrupt. <laughs> so you're focusing on making it work first? Not bankrupt. But Starlink already launched its service in its better than nothing beta program. It already has 900 satellites laid out in space. Users were expected to see speeds between 50 to 150 megabits per second and latency of around 20 to 40 milliseconds. Beta users have been reporting much better numbers. This user, for example, reported a 16 millisecond latency and around 200 megabits per second download speed and 20 to 40 megabits per second upload speed. That's impressive. SpaceX is launching their satellites with Falcon 9, which allows them to send 60 per time. But once Starship is ready, they'll be able to send 430 satellites per launch. There are already concerns about light pollution caused by the satellites since they are very visible when they are deploying. Astronomers are worried about light pollution when the satellites are in space. But SpaceX is already mitigating these risks by painting the satellites black and orienting them in such a way that they don't reflect light. The public beta costs nearly $600 to join the waitlist, $499 for users to buy the user terminal, the antenna, and all its accessories, and $99 per month for the service. On the internet, we can see a lot of people were excited to get the service. Elon Musk made the user terminal very simple to set up. Starlink has the potential of becoming one of the most valuable companies in the world. If it only reaches 20 million people, that's only in the US and Canada, it has the potential of making $30 billion of revenue per year. Given that this is a really high margin business, with a 60% margin, they could make $18 billion of operating income per year. With a 20 times multiple, this would mean that the company would be valued at $360 billion. That's a huge business. But Elon Musk might use the money from Starlink to help us colonize Mars. Let's hope for the best. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. If you like this video, please don't forget to check out the 5 Tesla FSD bugs. I hope you have a great day. Bye.